Hi, good evening, councillors, and our sol solitary member of the public, welcome. Uh, welcome to this meeting of the uh, Southern Area Planning Committee. Uh, before we start, can I remind you again of the fire regulations and make sure you know your nearest exit, and in the event of a fire alarm, please make your way, and we meet at the canopy uh, near wait uh, Waitrose. Uh, could you make sure, please, that your mobile phones are switched to silent or off? And can you just make sure that your cards, councillors, are firmly in so that we can hear you uh, for the recording? Um, I don't think I need to remind the members of the public gallery how to behave. <laughs> I don't think I'm not predicting any trouble tonight. So let's uh, let's just move straight on to the main items of business. Minutes of the last meeting. Are you quite happy that I sign them as a record of the true record of the last meeting? Agreed. Uh, apologies for absence, uh, Emma. Uh, we have apologies from councillors Simon Inchbold and Jim Edwards. Thank you, Emma. Any declarations of interest? Uh, none before the meeting, but I believe Hazelmere Town Councillors declare a non-pecuniary interest. Does anyone have any other uh, interest other than the Hazelmere Town Council? Uh, questions from members of the public, Emma? Have we received any? Uh, none received, Chairman. And Peter, are there any relevant updates that you need to update us on? Thank you, Chairman. No updates this evening. It's very brief, so quickly in then to the applications. And the first one, A1, it is, uh, oh, sorry, I should just mention the site um, inspections, if any arise from this meeting, and I doubt it, they'll be on Tuesday, the 21st of November. Uh, so straight on to the application, uh, application A1, WA 2017-1111, 31 Hill Road, Hazelmere, GU 27-2NH, the the proposal for an erection of an attached dwelling, and it's Ryan, I think, who is going to introduce this. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, so the application is for the erection of an attached dwelling at 31 Hill Road in Hazelmere. We'll start with the location plan. The application site is located on the southern side of Hill Road and comprises an area of land which originally formed part of the amenity space of 31 Hill Road. However, the site has since been subdivided and fenced off. The land levels slope down from the main road uh, to the south and west. Here's an aerial photograph here um, showing the surrounding area, which is predominantly residential in character, um, characterised by two-storey detached residential properties set in medium to large plots. We have some site photographs here. Um, these photographs show the site when viewed from Hill Road. Uh, the proposal would extend the host building by 9.5 metres in width to provide an additional dwelling. As you, you can see from these photos, the topography of the site is such that the dwelling would be positioned on lower ground to that of the highway at Hill Road, from, from uh, where those photos were taken from. Some more site photographs here. Um, the photograph on the left shows the existing ve vehicular access to the site that was approved and implemented under planning reference WA 2013-0210. And this would be utilised as part of this current scheme. The photograph on the right shows the remainder of the site and then views beyond to the listed building at number, numbers 29 and 29A <coughs> Hill Road to the southwest of the site. Um, and the bottom photograph shows the site when viewed along the road from the junction with Park Road. So here we have the proposed uh, block plan. And you can see um, with the host dwellings here and then the, extent, the extended attached dwelling here. Uh, the dwelling would extend the host dwelling and would be set back from the main road with areas of amenity space to the rear and side. Um, as part of the proposal, the existing detached outbuilding would be demolished and vehicular access would be provided onto Hill Road with hard standing for car parking to the front of the site along with landscaping. And here are the existing elevations of the property, and, and um, there you can see the detached outbuilding, which would be demolished as part of this scheme. So here we have the, <coughs> the proposed um, elevations uh, for the north and south facing elevations of, of the new dwelling. The external materials would be facing brickwork and tile hanging, plain clay tiles on the roof and white painted joinery. Uh, as the plans demonstrate, the proposal would take the form of the existing building, would be set back from the principal elevation, mirroring the roof pitch, 
uh, with, with a lower eaves height and matching external materials and fenestration. And here we have the eastern facing elevation, which would face to the rear of the property. Um, here we have the proposed floor plans, which detail the internal layer at ground floor on the left and, and first floor on the right. All of the proposed bedrooms are in accordance with the technical housing standards, and furthermore, um, they would all, ha all habitable rooms would have adequate light and outlook. The proposal therefore complies with the technical standards and provides an acceptable standard of accommodation. Here you can see the proposal um, uh, in the street scene there. Um, the proposed dwelling is, is labelled. Um, and, and as you can see, the, the ridge height would be set down from the host dwelling, which um, would give the appearance of a subservient extension. <coughs> so here I've set out the differences between the current proposal and the previous scheme um, under WA 2016 1032, which was um, refused and dismissed at appeal. The inspector found um, in this, that in this distinctive spatial context, the development proposed under that application, which is shown uh, on the top there, um, <clears throat> in terms of its footprint and the volume of development, would appear significantly smaller and at odds with the character of the area, uh, which has a grander scale. Uh, so as part of this application, the enlarged building, including the proposed attached dwelling, would have a width of 22.5 metres. Uh, this would be comparable to the scale of the neighbouring dwellings in the area. The changes which have been made to the scheme in this respect are considered to give the development a more spacious appearance, with more space provided for landscaping uh, either side. Officers are of the opinion that the proposed dwelling would therefore appear as an extension to the existing building at number, numbers 31 and 33, and would be seen overall as one large dwelling, which would be in keeping with its plot when viewed from the street scene of Hill Road. So overall, the proposal is considered to be of an acceptable scale, form and design, which would not materially and would not materially impact on adjoining occupiers or the surrounding highway network, overcoming any previous concerns raised by the council and the expector. The proposal would preserve the character and special interest of the listed building and would accord to policies HE3, HE5 and HE8 of the local plan. Uh, the matters of principle and technical opinion are the principle of development planning history and difference with previous proposals, uh, lawful use of the land, housing land supply, impact on the setting of the adjacent listed building, highways, impact on trees, effect on SPAs and biodiversity, the matters of judgment, a design and impact on visual amenity, uh, impact on residential amenity, standard of accommodation and amenity space. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Ryan. And we do have a, um, a public speaker on this matter, an objector. Mr Richard Akers, would you like to come forward? When you're comfortable, if you press the large button to put your microphone on, and you have four minutes from when you start speaking. Uh, thanks very much. Um, as uh, I said, I'm, I'm Richard Akers. I'm a neighbour to the application site. And I'm going to try and summarise what um, local people think about this proposal. Uh, which we're objecting to and would, and would seek um, re refusal from the committee. Um, there, are three key, there are three key reasons. That one is, the, the, the first one is that this would become a terrace of three houses, uh, which in itself is out of character with the area. There aren't any other terraces of three houses in this area, uh, which has been described as an as a, as a area of special character. The second reason is the overall scale of the building. Uh, would it would start to compete with the listed buildings on either side, Shepherdstown Hollies, which is grade two to the east, and also Broad Dean, which is grade two star listed to the west. And the third reason is the fact that the fact that this would be three houses, all with their own accesses, driveways and car parking, in a relatively small plot puts it directly at odds with the special quality of the area described by planning inspectors in their previous appeal decisions. And the problems are shown up in some of the challenges in the design, the awkwardness of the car parking arrangements, which are highlighted by the, uh, in the committee report. And um, local people would be, I hope, hopefully you'll forgive us for being skeptical about using landscaping to overcome these problems. 
because the, um, the existing site uh, is actually the subject of an approved landscaping plan which has apparently been implemented. Now, the most, the most key thing as far as we're concerned is that this proposal is very similar to uh, application, an application that was made in 2006. Uh, the reference number is 1376. It's noted in the planning history. And this was for a building of three houses and was refused on grounds of its adverse impact on the character of the area and on the setting of the two listed buildings. And it wasn't appealed. And you know, we think that this provides a very strong precedent and uh, should be a material consideration in determining this application. And in summary, uh, we feel that uh, we would urge the committee to uh, refuse this application. It is a very large building. It's described as a cottage in the application. It's 8.6 metres high, just the, the extension bit. Um, Shepherd's Down, where I live, is nine metres high, and it's a three-storey building. This is, this is actually a very big extension, nine and a half metres wide, 8.6 8 high. It's a very big extension, far bigger than it needs to be for a three-bedroom house, and would have a seriously adverse impact on the character of the area, in our view. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Akers. If I could just ask you to do the reverse and turn your... Oh, thank you very much indeed. Right, members, over to you. Councillor Mulliner. Thank you very much, Chairman, as I called it in, as I'd better say why. Um, I've been up to Hill Road several times, really in an effort to visualise what the impact of the proposed application would be. Because if you look at the, appeal, the planning history and the appeal history, it's quite clear that the principal concern of all the inspectors was not the setting of the listed building as such, but the character and appearance of the area and the impact of the various developments which the applicant has sought over the years to try and get permission for. And I think if we can just go back to the street scene, Ryan. Can you just go back there? Yeah. I took the papers up with me and just stood there looking at the building from the road and looking at this diagram. And I'm not suggesting anyone's drawn it badly as such, but the impact on the eye, which is actually what matters, because it's character and appearance of the area that we're talking about, are completely at odds with that. I agree with the uh, speaker, the, the Mr. Mr. Akers, that the existing building is large. It's actually, it looks pretty massive because it is so much closer to the road than the other ones that we're talking about. And if you add what is more than 50% in bulk to that, you're going to get an even more massive object. I'll disagree with Mr. Akers when he said that it would compete with the listed buildings. I think it'll dominate them, to be honest. It's so much nearer, it grabs the eye, and I have to say, looking at the design of the existing buildings, it's not ter terribly exciting. And if this building is going to be the same design, I don't think we're going to have anything terribly wonderful to look at. One of the advantages we've got over the inspector in 2007 who finally allowed development on that corner of the site was that we can now see the existing buildings, which he couldn't do. I mean, planning is often about making the best judgment you can based upon drawings and trying to think what it would look like. Well, we can now do a far better job because we can go and look at the current buildings. And that is what has led me to, with some reluctance, I thought the report was extremely good, and I do appreciate the applicant has obviously been taking note of what inspectors have been saying, and even if he didn't like what the committee was saying, and has tried to do something different. But I come back to the impact on the appearance of the area. Spaciousness and is an important part of it. And when you actually stand in the road and see how already the existing building seems to be pretty close to Shepherd's Down, this will make it even closer and, and larger. So the other issues, I think actually an Im there will be an impact on the setting of the listed building. I see the officers, the heritage officer doesn't, doesn't ag agree. And I do think that the amenity space of 31 is going to take obviously quite a, quite a reduction, but it may be adequate. I do agree that the size of this is substantial. The bedrooms are very generous indeed. So it's much larger, in fact, than the previous de detached dwelling that was pr pr 
proposed. And this really, I think, it explains why it is going to look so massive if we approve it. So my current position, depending on what I hear, but is that I don't think I can support the officer's recommendation on this occasion. I think this is still too big. It's too close to the, to the road. It will dominate the, the street scene and therefore will give rise to substantial harm to the character and appearance of the area. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Mallon. Councillor Round? Thank you, Madam Chair. I do agree with a lot of what my colleague has just said and also Mr Akers. But we also need to take account of what we've got at the present. The site for which this application refers is an eyesore. It's been like that for years. It's ugly. Um, I also suspect that the impact on the listed building um, is more noticeable now because there was a large hedge there which separated the listed building very substantially from this site, and that hedge has been chopped down. Um, I wonder if the um, presence of that hedge for decades has reduced the impact we should give to the, sorry, re reduced the importance we should give to the impact on the listed, listed building after they did without the um, openness for many years. But the problem, I think, is the conditions imposed on the original permission for two houses and not three. Indeed, one of the objectors has raised this on page 14, the top bullet point says there was a condition imposed on the original permission that prevents any further buildings on the site, so the council must back up its original decision and refuse this application. And I just wonder if the developer is simply by sitting and waiting and trying various applications, seeing if he can get round that and should we allow him to do so. I've read all these notes here and I notice all the reference to High Court judgments and so on and so forth. I fully accept a lot of time has been put into this by the officers, but may I ask one of the officers to summarise that issue? Should we be constrained by the fact that original permission for the two very bulky houses that are already there included the fact that he wasn't allowed to develop this plot? And if we gave it permission now, are we going back on that? Can I ask the question? Mm. Thank you. No, I'm just going to ask one of the officers to answer it for you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, my understanding is that the, that the previous permission had a condition on it preventing um, permitted development to take place for outbuildings, so it gave us control ultimately. It, do, it doesn't, um, I haven't got the exact reasoning for the condition in front of me, but generally when we apply per restriction on permitted development, that is to allow us control over future development, and particularly in a sensitive area where you've got a listed building um, and it's quite a sensitive area in terms of its character, we will look to control um, outbuildings, particularly when there's opportunity again to put them to the side of properties also, because they would be more visually um, prominent. So I don't think you're particularly governed by that, but it, th that condition allows the council to maintain control over future development within that garden area, but it shouldn't be a reason to refuse a planning application if everything else is found to be acceptable, but that's, that's the judgment members are making tonight. Is that helpful? Do you want to come back, Councillor Ron? Briefly, if I may. Thank you. It is helpful. In other words, we don't need to be bound by what would appear to be previous many years ago uh, restrictions. Um, OK, on balance, I must say, the, the issue is what we've got and what we do about it. And I'd almost do anything to get the site changed from what it is now. I note Mr Aker's concerns, but I would equally thought that the residents in that area would not be very happy with the site, with the condition of the site as it is now. So I'm minded, unless I hear otherwise, to um, grudgingly say, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Round. Any other speakers on this one? Councillor Adams? Yes, it, um, it does look a nice um, street scene in a nice part of Hazelmere. But um, I go back to, well, I, I tend to think these days about what an, an appeal inspector might say um, if we reject it. Um, I, uh, and I go back to the fact that, um, you know, we are now in a, <coughs> in a, um, uh, in a, in a position where sustainable development is key to everything. 
Um, I can't see that uh, the overriding change to the street scene would actually be um, taken into account as strongly as Councillor Mullen has suggested at appeal. Um, so I would um, approve this. Uh, uh. Thank you, Councillor Adams. Councillor Isherwood. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I was reminded, sadly, that 11 years ago, I was one of the councillors who looked at the first application when the local plan 2002 was fairly fresh. 2002 is no longer applicable. We are looking, hopefully, to a new plan coming forward. But at the time, we objected strongly to the idea of three houses on the plot. We foresaw what was going to happen. And lo and behold, here we are 11 years later. We're just about there. But everything has changed. As Councillor Adams has just said, the whole situation has changed. The inspector has said that the Grade 2 listed building uh, is not going to suffer because of it. I would like to think that a very strong condition on boundary treatment and um, uh, greenery on that part of the hill was uh, applied vigorously. Uh, I think we've, Councillor Rowan made the comment that it is a mess. Well, dereliction of a site is no reason to grant planning permission. I fully understand that. I think that this actually fits in a little bit better than anything we're likely to see, and I worry enormously if it goes to appeal what the inspector would say. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Isherwood. Does anybody else wish to add any comments? Councillor Mullen, you should come back. Thank you, Chairman. I'll just say on the issue of the appeal, um, a general comment is rather sad when um, planning judgment which is supposed to be non-political and purely based on what is good for the long-term state of the local environment is being affected by this. I think one's always concerned if you think you might lose an award of costs. But one thing that's come out of the history of this site is that the members' judgment about what is good for the character and appearance of the area has been backed up by the inspectorate on every occasion. If we were to refuse this, I dare say it would go to appeal, but I would be astonished. If we're doing it for reasons which we as the local members who actually live in the area can go and see it, can go and form a very educated judgment, as I hope I've tried to, tried to do on my own account, if we think it isn't a good idea, the inspector may well say, as they sometimes do, well, I can understand why the members felt as they did. I take a different view, but that's just a difference of opinion. Under those circumstances, I don't think there are any, there's any chance of a costs, costs award, and neither do I think it would affect our sort of general standing, if you like, in terms of the number of appeals we win or lose, which are principally, I think, about the major ones. I'd be very sorry to think this committee was influenced by those considerations. I think we should look at it on purely planning grounds. And as I say, once you've interfered with the character and appearance of the area, you can't put it, put it back. It's done. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> I think we've taken a view over the last four or five, five years, this corner of Hazelmere, increasingly rare, should be preserved. And I remain of my opinion that fairly strongly, having been affected by how large the existing building is, adding 50% to it is going to make it even larger, in my view, and that's why I'm afraid I'm going to stick with my opinion. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Mullen. As long as we make our judgment on planning matters and planning issues, then we don't have an issue, as you say. But we have to, as Councillor Adams says, take into account that we are living in a very different time uh, from our previous uh, incarnation, as it were. So we have to balance everything. Uh, and certainly I would never be swayed by costs. I think we make the right decision, but we must make it on planning grounds and planning grounds alone. Otherwise, we are unreasonable. And that's, of course, as you know, when we lose costs. So does anybody else like to comment on this before we move to the recommendation? No? In that case, can we move to the recommendation, please? Very simple. That, oh, just before I do that, um, I'm trying to think, was it, gosh, I've forgotten which, who it was. Was it Councillor Isherwood mentioned uh, boundary treatments and, and just perhaps beefing up the condition on landscaping? Is that possible, or do you think it's strong enough? 
Thank you, Chairman. Um, we, we can add specific reference on Condition 4 to um, the boundary treatment as well, whilst that generally covers that, but if we want to be explicit, we can, we can cover that off with some additional wording. So, prior to occupation, a detailed landscaping scheme, including full details of all boundary treatment, um, and then as the wording of that condition sits there, so we could, could add that wording if that was agreed. Thank you, Chairman. Is that agreed by the committee to strengthen that particular condition on landscaping? Yeah, Everyone quite happy with that? Good. Well, in that case, we move to the recommendation that it's subject to conditions 1 to 10, remembering that uh, condition 4 has just had that um, amendment, and the informatives 1 to 5, that permission be granted. Can I see all those in favour of granting permission, please? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And all those against? Uh, two. Plan two. Uh, oh, yes, I always forget. Uh, any abstentions? One. So permission is granted. Thank you very much indeed. And pleasant journey home. Very brief evening for you.